Okay, we're just going to have a quick look at a test cross. Um, we'll use our black and white sheep again because we're familiar with them. Um, so to start off here, let's let's just consider the scenario that we've got uh, two two sheep here in the paddock, and we don't know the genotypes. We can just see the phenotypes. We can just see what they um, they look like. And this white sheep here must have the genotype small b small b. Couldn't be anything else. Whereas the black sheep could be homozygous or it could be heterozygous and we really don't know uh, and, and that's where a test cross comes in and we're going to look at the scenario if we want to find out what this uh, sheep is or, or use it for breeding um, ha, ha, what sort of cross could we do to determine whether it's a homozygous or heterozygous and that's called, that's called a test cross so let's imagine we have one of these black sheep okay, and our, our black sheep as we said earlier could be homozygous dominant or homozygous or heterozygous sorry um, and we want to find out what it is now what we use in our experiments here is we we cross in a test cross always with a, a recessive individual so in this case the white sheep and we get we get some uh, very very different results and by doing this cross with the recessive individual you could tell whether it was homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Now if we did these crosses here we'd find that in this situation with the homozygous dominant all offspring would turn out black. They'd all be heterozygous individual. And You can do the Punnett squares if you need to here. Um, if we cross it with a heterozygous we'd probably find that we have a, a phenotype ratio of one black to one white okay and if we look at the genotypes here um, what we're finding is that you know 50 percent of the individuals are going to have uh, the um, small b from one parent and the small b from the other the other are going to have the big b from uh, one parent and the small b either of the small b's from the other parent so we're going to end up with 50% that look black and 50% that look white. Now, when we, we think about uh, this in terms of uh, our outcomes with this black with this black sheep here, when we cro cross this black sheep with our white sheep, okay, and if we end up with any offspring at all that are white, we know that the, this original black individual was heterozygous. If we end up with black sheep, well, it doesn't. It can't really tell you either way. It could either be the black sheep uh, from a, a homozygous dominant cross, or the black sheep being, with the black sheep being heterozygous. Now, I suppose the only only real way um, to to look any further is, is wait until you get a white sheep, or wait until you get lots and lots and lots of black sheep, and you'd be even more certain. If you had uh, two or three black sheep, you'd be a bit more certain. Five, six, ten, you'd be you'd be going. Oh, I'm pretty certain. If you ended up with a uh, hundred black sheep, you could almost say, yeah, it must be, um, must be very, very, very likely that it's homozygous dominant. Now, it's also possible to do a test cross with um, a, a dihybrid cross. Okay, and it's the same sort of thing. If we were looking at um, black tall sheep, perhaps, um, and we had an individual that was black and tall, heterozygous, um, with with black and tall genes being the uh, dominant genes, and the short and white being the uh, the recessive genes. You know, you can imagine that these three individuals, these three genotypes, all look exactly the same, and to determine uh, what, what they are, um, we would do test cross, and to do a test cross, we would cross it with the recessive individual, recessive for both characteristics. And that would tell you whether um, your black tall sh sheep is recessive for one characteristic or recessive for both characteristics. Uh, again, um, if it turned out short or white, um, you know, you'd know that it must, must be carrying that recessive gene.